Red Skelton Show with David Rose and his orchestra and Red's guest stars Jackie Coogan, Mary Beth Hughes, and Franklin Pangborn. And now, here he is, the star of our show, Red Skelton. very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the $64,000 challenge. We, uh, <laughs> so we got Jackie Coogan on here tonight, so I thought I'd mention that. The, uh, I understand that back east it's really cold and it's snowing back there. It's really something awful. Back at the pet milk place, <laughs> they had to jack the cows up to milk them. <laughs> and then when the milk came out, it came out like spaghetti. They had to break it. <laughs> And then there's, uh, there's a lot of news in the, in the papers this week about the fellow that's uh, simulating a trip to the moon. And uh, for, for seven days, he's been... I called my mother up, see, and my mother a little hard of hearing, see. And I said to her, how about that guy in that tank for seven days? She says, your brother's where? <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, she's out driving one afternoon, and she plows right into something. She turns to Gus, and she... And Gus says, what'd you do that for? She says, you told me to. He says, I said, give him the right away. She says, I thought you said, get him right away. <laughs> Our show tonight has to do with uh, automobiles and with garages. And speaking of cars, I got a new muffler for mine. <laughs> Fits right over her mouth. <laughs> I've got the only car in town that runs by remote control from the finance company. I get to the city limit, they press a button, the wheels fall off. But uh, the cars nowadays are really, uh... <laughs> you know, they make fun of us out here in California, the way we drive and everything, but it's not the California drivers, it's the out-of-towners. They don't understand our, our signals, you know. Like on the way to the studio this afternoon, a car stopped for a red light. How do you like that? <laughs> When a guy steps out of, a, out, of, out of one of those safety zones, hit him, knock him back in. <laughs> but, you know, speaking of, of, uh, of filling stations and garages and things, did you ever notice that when you drive into a car, it seems like they're forever taking care of your car, no matter how good the service is, unless it's a real pretty girl driving. See? Then I'll show you what happens. I'll be the driver. Now, you have to imagine all the things, like the, the, the pumps and the water hose and the car and everything. See, we have a very low budget. <laughs> See, since I've been sick, they, they, they don't know if I'm going to show up or not. They don't want to spend a nickel on you. No kidding, when I walk into rehearsal, they say, oh, he's here, huh? <laughs> well, put up the sets, boys. We'll try something. <laughs> here's, here's the filling station, the pretty girl driving in, the tenant. <laughs>
deserves anything that happens to him. <laughs> what did you say? Well, I, I, what I meant is that he deserves all the punishment he can get. He mm. deserves it. Look here. He's murdered six women and they haven't even captured him yet. Isn't that something? And they've offered a $10,000 reward. Oh. Boy, how we could use that kind of money. Yeah, oh boy. <laughs> what? Well, I got to get back to work here. I got to work on this car. The guy's coming for it right after lunch and I got... Forty or fifty dollars more worth of work to do on it. Oh, what do you have to do? Oh, I don't know. I'll think of something. <laughs> well, okay, honey, you go back to work. I'll see you at supper. All right, I'll see you at supper. <laughs> hey, thanks for finding my other glove for me. Well, now. Well. Oh, I better check and see if they got a spare tire. I'll change tires. That's always worth a couple of bucks, anyhow, you know. Here we are. You come right in. <laughs> I didn't see it. I didn't see the body. The body in there. <laughs> a dead one. They're the worst kind. <laughs> Pretty stupid, it's the wrong end. Hello. Oh, operator, give me the police. Hurry, give me the police. Hello, murder? I think I got the I got the police. <laughs> operator, uh, the police? I found the murder. No, the body was in the back of a car down in my garage here. He'll be back any minute. Who is he? I don't know, but he gets an awful lot of applause. <laughs> I'll try to keep him here. What does he look like? Oh, he's got black hair, blue eyes, got a gray suit and wearing black shoes. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Huh? Goodbye. Oh, don't make it so definite. <laughs> Sounds like you're talking to the police about oh, me. Who, me? Oh, don't be silly. Why would I turn you over to a police? Nice fellow like you. Real nice, real nice fellow. N-I-S-E, nice. Real nice. I've seen nice fellows in my days, but you're really nice. You were a lovable sort of a... Grab this dirty mother! <laughs> I don't know anything about this, gentlemen. Oh, you don't, don't no. you? Well, go open up that trunk and take a look. Come in here. Come in. You want to see something? Open here. it up. Here, you take a look in there. Here, you go right ahead. You look at that. Well, huh? 
Well, well. Uh, a beautiful store dummy. Ain't that something? <laughs> I mean, it's alive. I mean, it's, it's not dead. It's a dummy. Pulse. My card. My card, officer. Oh? <laughs> you see, I happen to be a window dresser. Oh, oh. I'm very sorry, Mr. Carter. Sorry. I'll see that the police don't bother you anymore. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> yes, and uh, I mean, it's, you're entirely innocent of all charges. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And, it's, and it's for you, Dick Tracy. You can confine your detective work to a crank case. Oh. <laughs> and if you ever get us down here in another wild goose chase like this, you're going to be in trouble. Well, now, just a minute, Jack Webb wouldn't handle it this way. <laughs> oh, shut up! All right, I'm very sorry, Mr. Carter. Come on, men. Oh, men? <laughs> <laughs> Must be the Valley Police Force. <laughs> Say, Mr. Carter, I'm sorry about that. I should have known that was a dummy. Yes, you certainly should have. Oh, oh yeah. It usually <laughs> takes one to know one. <laughs> Will you please get my bill ready? Oh, certainly. <laughs> Thank you, Genevieve. <laughs> Thank you. Now, when I have a real body in there, I won't be disturbed. <laughs> you see, Mr. Rafferty has my... <laughs> Hello. Oh, that hokey thing. <laughs> Hello. My Jaguar just hit a cow. Your Jaguar just hit a cow? Well, call the zoo. This is a garage. <laughs> <laughs> Over here, George. Oh, over there. 
Oh, there you are. Why, <laughs> hey, you fresh thing. Oh. <laughs> I'm over here, George. Oh, there you are, little red riding hood, taking your comeback. You <laughs> masher. <laughs> hey, that's good. You got the fights on now. That's better. <laughs> See a thing. I'm going to put my glasses No, no, on. Well, give those to me. I don't want Carter to recognize you. Oh, that's fine. Now, let's get our plan straight. Yes. Now, when Carter comes in here, I let him pick me up. Oh, yes. And then I agree to go for a ride with him, see? Yeah. Now, when we go out to get the car before that, what do you do? <laughs> what do you do, George? Well, I go out and I take the distributor over, the distributor over the motor so he can't start it up. That's right. Yeah. Now, then when he's trying to start the car, you run for the cop on the corner. Oh, isn't it exciting? <laughs> <laughs> Don't it make you feel like you're in an Alfred Hitchcock murder? Uh... <laughs> George, you have to pretend you're drunk so he doesn't recognize you. Oh, yeah. You think you can act drunk? Oh, sure. Without my glasses, I'm half blind anyhow. <laughs> Remember. Keep an eye on us. Keep an eye on you. Okay, kid. Uh, <laughs> what do you have, buddy? Buddy, I never had one of those. Uh, I'll, I'll have some orange juice. Just plain orange juice? No, over the rocks. <laughs> but leave the pits in it. I feel reckless. <laughs> After you, friend. <laughs> well, here's to you. How am I doing, huh? <laughs> 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 Maybe I've been in this business too long, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody got a hook magazine, I'll read about Steve Allen while I'm waiting. How about having a little drink with me, cutie? Well, well I'd love to. You look kind of cute yourself. <laughs> You, you're drunk. I was talking to the lady. Oh, the lady. Oh, that's well, it. We've never met personally. The flies are awful in here. They're bar flies, you know. <laughs> Come on, honey. Let's get out of here. Yes, I'll just get out of here. These drunks drive me nuts. Oh, me too. <laughs> <Yeah>. Delinquent. <laughs> Have fun, you two. I'm taking the stuff off the wrong car. Good heavens, that murderer drove away with my wife. Oh, if she kills me, she'll never speak to me again. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, oh. Hey, could I use the phone? Just take it easy, buddy. What, are you drunk or something? No, no, no. Well, when I get finished, you can have the phone. Yes, dear, yes, dear. I'll be home as soon as I can. Look. No, I'm not in the bar. You know I never touch the stuff. No. No, they're bearing you standing up. I don't know. Look, you know, look my, there's a man going to kill my wife. I he is? Yeah. Well, I'm a married man myself. How much does he charge? <laughs> I'll call some place else. Right? Uh, yes, dear, yes. The phone. <laughs> this is such a 
a nice place for a murder. <laughs> Plenty of room and uh, so nice and quiet. <laughs> and especially appropriate. Uh, uh, this is a... What was that? What was that? <laughs> oh, you darn little car. <laughs> Where's my glasses, anyhow? Let me go with them. Oh, there they are. There. Where have you been? <laughs> 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 that looks like Carter's car. It is Carter's car. But where's Carter? Uh, he can't be too far away. Oh, no, he isn't. Oh, 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 no. Here now, here now. Here now. <laughs> Why don't you ride in the back seat like everybody else? <laughs> I guess. Now, 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 where are you going to run? Down to the drugstore to get some bandages. I think I'm going to need them. <laughs> you, you're going to kill you, Oh, no, you only kill women. You don't kill men. Now, in this case, we'll make an exception. Oh, no, wait a minute. I heard. <laughs> I'll squirt this acid on you. Go well, help me. Looks like you're tied up, boy. <laughs> window. Get out of there. You look silly. <laughs> I've been running for this for a long time. <laughs> there you are, Lieutenant. There's your murderer. Look at those narrow set beady eyes. <laughs> Why, certainly. I got his whole confession over the phone. You, how could you? He was in the drawer. Well, Oklahoma. it was a little bit muffled, but we got it. You know, Appleby, you're a hero. Really? Yeah, and you're going to get a reward of $10,000. That's $6,000 more than you got. <laughs> what had happened to you in that isolation booth? It's awful hot. <laughs> How did you ever capture that awful man? It was easy. I, I got him head caught in there, and then I just pressed the button, and up came the wind with the goo. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to thank the makers of Pet Milk for making our visit possible. Next week, we'll be brought to you by alternate sponsors, the makers of Johnson's Wax. So now, go again, we'll say Pet Milk. Come on, say thanks to Pet Milk. Go on, no, don't fly away. Just say thanks, Pet Milk. Skelton Show, produced by Cecil Barker, directed by Seymour Burns, written by Sherwood Schwartz, Jesse Goldstein, Dave O'Brien, Red Skelton. Portions of the preceding program were pre-recorded. This is Art Gilmore speaking.